Let's start, though, with the COVID situation in Quebec and an extraordinary letter from more than 700 of the province's doctors. They say Quebec's centralized health care system is to blame for some deaths. The doctors want the health minister to appoint an administrator for each hospital. They say clinics and hospitals must be able to make decisions for their patients without waiting on bureaucrats. We're going to speak to one of the doctors who signed that letter in just a moment. But first, here is what the COVID situation looks like in the province of Quebec today. The province recorded 1,030. 30 new cases and 25 more deaths. More than 500 people are in hospital. To add to the challenging situation, some Quebec healthcare facilities have been targeted in a cyber attack. Quebec's health minister did not say how many hospitals or clinics were affected, but he says computer systems were shut down to protect data. Now to the doctors breaking their silence and calling for changes in how Quebec's health care system is managed. Dr. Simon-Pierre Landry is one of the more than 700 physicians who signed that letter. He is a family and emergency room doctor in Mont-Tremblant, Quebec. Welcome to the program, Dr. Landry. Thank you for having me, Catherine. Yeah, I want to talk a bit more about uh, the fact that the spokesperson for your group said this is costing lives. Now, I know you it's very important for you to respect the confidentiality of your patients, but broadly, can you explain to our audience why is this, uh, what the letter refers to as hyper-centralization, why is this costing lives, how? Well, I think some deaths were avoidable for sure. Um, let's take a look at the long-term care facility, which were very hard, the hardest hit during the mm -hmm. first wave. Basically, you had a situation where you, have, you had, uh, for days, uh, employees not showing up and management was not even aware because management was like 200 kilometers away from those facilities at times. So the, the go government obviously noticed that and now they want to have some administrators in those long-term care facilities to avoid having that again, having employees not showing up and patients being uh, lying around with no supervision. Um, and in order to do that, you need a manager. You need to have somebody, somebody in charge who can take decisions and quick decisions. And, uh, uh, and, and for that, you need to decentralize the system. I wonder, as, as a doctor, as somebody who you know, has taken an oath, committed their lives to trying to save lives, what does it feel like to see, to know, or believe, I suppose, that a bureaucratic problem is ultimately costing people their lives? It's so frustrating because sometimes the problems are very easily resolved. You know, we're talking about having walls between green zones and red zones to make sure that COVID patients are in one area of an emergency room and that non-COVID patients are in another area of the emergency room. So these are very simple things. But if you have no one in charge, if you have no one that can actually say, I want a wall built there, uh, that wall won't be built. Um, for, and this is causing a lot of frustrations because we're losing time and sometimes even lives because we can't get things done. These are not, you know, very complex things to, to, to do. We're not asking for the moon. We're not asking for uh, millions of dollars. We're just asking basically to have some power that is centralized in Quebec City and in, 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 in regional organizations be devolved basically to the hospitals and to the long-term care facilities and to the clinics so that they can make quick decisions in order to save lives. I think, you know, anywhere in the country can relate to this, but I, I lived about half my life in Quebec, and I know the question of, of red tape and bureaucracy can be a particularly pressing one in Quebec. Are you, in a way, asking for more bureaucracy, though? You're asking for another step? No, what we're asking is that the manager has its office in the hospital. Mm. We want to have head of management in the hospital, not 200 kilometers away from that hospital. We want him to see firsthand what are the problems so that he can make decisions in order to resolve those problems. But right now, and it's been going on for, I mean, tens of years, mm -hmm. um, the Quebec system is being centralized since its creation, uh, since its creation in the 70s. But what happened was that when Gaetan Barrette's uh, liberal minister in 2014 decided to centralize it even more because he wanted to cut costs and he wanted to control, so micromanage from Quebec City how the hospitals were being run, run how the long-term care facilities were being run. Well, by doing that, he basically took the power away from those institutions. And this is why patients now feel that their hospital is so hard 
um, to get in touch with. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're a patient or a, somebody's a daughter in a long-term care facility and you're trying to speak to someone who can answer your questions, well, good luck because you don't have a manager in that long-term care facility with, where you can knock on their door and say, I've got this problem with my, my, my mother. Can you resolve that problem? And this is because the manager who used to be there mm -hmm. is now in an office far away from that institution. You speak about how this is an issue that has been ongoing for decades, but one that has particularly ramped up uh, in the last few years. I yeah. wonder, do you think it had to take a crisis in order to get this resolved, that it is so entrenched in the system, or do you think that there was a world where this could have been fixed before uh, the sort of catastrophe of the, the pandemic collided with that issue? It's an excellent question, and it gives me some optimism because I did try to change the system before the crisis hit. Um, I did. I, I even was a consultant for one of the former <laughs> Minister of Health. Oh, really? But the problem is that the bureaucracy is so entrenched in their ways that if you want to change it, you need to have a crisis. And this is the perfect moment. Everyone is noticing the problems even more. They used to be there, but now they are saying, well, this got to change. So this is the perfect time to get some of the changes changes that are needed basically for our health system. Okay, so let's talk about those changes. Uh, Quebec Health Minister Christian Dubé was asked about this today. He said he's open to making changes, but it has to come with local accountability. Do you think that that is a reasonable response? I think he's aware of the problems. He's uh, very in tune with decentralization. I think he really wants it to happen, but the problem is the administration in, in front of him. And by administration, I'm talking about the hierarchy in Quebec City, so the, the bureaucrats, but also the regional uh, organizations that take care of healthcare right now. There's a, he, he's, he has a, a tough job because he needs to tell them, you need to uh, get some of your power devolved to people who used to be under you in the hierarchy, you know? Yeah. And those people yeah. also need to step up. It, even if you get the power locally, the local people need to basically step up and do the work and be, um, in, in French we say imputable, you know, to, to, to be um, uh, responsible mm -hmm. for the decisions mm -hmm. they make. Um, and, and this is a cultural change because uh, the people locally have for years basically being able to say, well, it's not my fault, it's the minister's so, fault. So we, we, we only have a minute left, Dr. We only have a minute yeah. left, Dr. Landry, and what I really want to know is, do you think you're there then? I mean, you've made this case today, the spokesperson for your group, talking about the potential that, uh, well, that lives, he says, have been lost, that more could be lost. Do you, do you believe that this is going to happen in a timely fashion? I, I surely hope so. I, I think people are, are just getting to understand the situation better, and, and this conclusion is uh, in front of them our eyes. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, we appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about it today, and we wish uh, you and your colleagues all the best as you try to manage uh, in these incredible times. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.